こんにちは皆さんこのビデオについて JLPT エンニョンのヒントとか共有したいと思います私は JLPT エンニョン去年12月にフィリピンに受けましたなんか1年前ぐらいだね1年前ぐらいけど日本語の勉強を3月前ぐらいだけ続けました今 JLPT エンサーのために勉強しています多分来年の7月に次の JLPD を受けるつもりです。そして今日話していることを全部は試験の受けた直後に書きました。このビデオは自習する人にとって特に役立ちます。じゃあ日本語の紹介それだけです。英語に切り替えましょう。So, for the JLPT and for I self studied, I had very limited time. I tried to shortcut learning. I was kind of also lost at times since there was no one to guide me as to what to study in particular. So, like I said, these tips are helpful for people who are going to be self studying like I did. The first step is to know your study scope. For example, this chart gives us an estimate of how much we need to learn for each level. Knowing the scope gives you a concrete goal and allows you to map out your study plan, and you're able to gauge how far you've come or how far you need to go. This brings me to the second tip, which is to get a book. This is also part of setting your study scope. Books are more or less complete with what you need to learn, and a book will structure your entire learning process so you don't have to think of what lesson to study next, and it'll have everything you need, especially for grammar, which requires more explanation. I can guarantee if you finish books one and two of either Genki or Mia Nihongo, you can absolutely ace the exam. The reason I wrote this as a tip is because there might be some people who are studying Japanese without a book. And just using vocab and kanji lists and grammar lists online or learning apps. Especially when you have no time to spend on really sitting down and using a book. I tried to do this already before. I didn't use a book to review for the N4. And what happened was I was just lost in terms of studying because I was randomly jumping from one lesson point to another. And also during the exam, I was really good in some parts like the vocabs and kanji, but really bad at the reading comprehension and grammar. The third tip is to go the extra mile to get that extra learning. Don't think that the book is gonna give you all the knowledge that you need. In learning a grammar pattern or a word, sometimes We really just need more sample sentences. In particular, I use this really great website that give an in depth explanation of the usage of words or grammar patterns, and they give really great and practical examples. The next tip is to start making your own sentences. When you make your own sentences, you understand the use of each particle and the verb conjugations more thoroughly, and that's gonna help you a lot in the exam. There's a part in the JLPT where they give you scrambled words and you have to identify the proper order. I thought this was gonna be easy, but it's not when there are so many particles in one sentence. Like, how do you make a sentence that's full of particles? I was really confused at the time, but now that I'm practicing this week more, I have a better grasp of really using the particles in a sentence. And when I practice making sentences, I post it on HelloTalk, which is a language exchange app. And Japanese natives are very, very willing to correct the sentences that you make. The app is very learner friendly. The next tip is for kanji, and it is to use flashcard apps. We are all busy people, but we have a lot of unutilized spare time, like waiting times, break time, travel time, so many parts of the day where you can squeeze a few kanji repetitions. And it's most convenient to access it on your phone. If your goal is just a JLPT, you don't need to know the stroke order, you just need the visual recognition of a character. Also, you have to do it every day because it's so easy to forget kanji when we don't use them or we don't see them. I survived the JLPT without ever practicing to write and for to be honest, but if you do have the time and you're the type of person who learns better by writing to reinforce it in your brain, practicing the stroke order is the way to go. An advantage of this is that you'll be able to more easily differentiate similar kanji with the tiniest radical differences because it can really get confusing. Also, the kanji that you learn gets stored into your long term memory better when you write it 
or when you learn mnemonics for it rather than just recognition because after I took the N4 before I almost completely forgot every kanji that I studied but at least I passed the exam so it really depends on what your priorities are another thing you should be aware of is spelling Yes, you can get an item wrong in the exam if you don't know the right way to spell it. Sometimes it can get tricky. For this part of the exam, just keep doing more every day. If you learn around 300 kanji and about 1,500 vocabulary, this part is going to be easy as pie. Tip number 9. Reading a sentence as opposed to reading a paragraph is completely different. You need to be able to develop a consistent pace. And of course, time is limited in the JLPT. The thing is, your reading speed goes as fast as your talking speed. Like if you notice, when you read Japanese, you tend to read it out loud or mouth it silently. So that's how you gauge how fast you can read. And it just really takes reading practice to increase your speed. Tip number 10. Answering practice tests will get you into the groove of the actual test taking and you get to see which areas you are lacking in and where you need to focus on and what your progress is at. You also need to give your brain a chance to put together everything that you've been learning and also taking practice tests will I guess make you nervous. Sometimes you need the scare of the exam to motivate your right. If you can get a hold of the JLPT books, then that's great. But like me, if you have limited resources, then any online practice tests will do. Some might be outdated because they changed the JLPT format a few years ago, so the difficulty might vary, but you know, they may still be worth answering. There are apps as well that have sample questions. Even on YouTube, there are practice tests, so take some time to practice before the JLPT. Next is for the listening section. I think this is the favorite part of a lot of people. But if you're not used to hearing Japanese conversation, you might have a tough time in this section of the exam. So listen to podcasts, online lessons, and conversations like while taking a bath or while eating or while doing chores. You can listen at a slower pace and then when you're comfortable, you can increase the speed of whatever you're listening to. The thing with listening sections is that when you dissect the conversation, each sentence is actually really easily understandable. The reason it becomes difficult is because they talk really quickly, especially in the JLPT, while our brain processes it a lot more slowly. Another challenge is also the length of the conversation. There's a phenomenon called primacy and recency where we remember the first thing and last thing, but not the in-between. If you've taken the JLPT exam before, you'll notice that Given a long conversation, you're going to easily remember the first thing and the last thing that they say. But everything in between is kind of blurry. The last thing is that the JLPT is all multiple choice. Our tendency is, during the listening section, when a choice is mentioned in the conversation, we think that's the answer. But oftentimes, you know, they're very tricky. The conversation will mention all the choices and if you aren't paying attention you're gonna get lost so the tip here is to help your brain by creating quick notes write on your test booklet because you are allowed to write on it scribble information cross out the choices as the conversation flows draw symbols that will help you if they're talking about directions or figures and so on next for reading comprehension it's only allotted one hour if you've practiced reading paragraphs before, this may not be a problem for you. Otherwise, you definitely can't skip items in the exam to come back to later because there won't be enough time. You're reading a paragraph to answer, let's say, two or three questions. And if you skip that because you didn't grasp or understand what you read, you have to reread the entire paragraph again if you come back for it. And, you know, ain't nobody got time for that. So in the reading comprehension section, try as much as possible to understand the paragraph and answer right away and use context clues. It'll be helpful if you read the question first before reading the paragraph so you know what to look for. Sometimes in the reading comprehension, your biggest enemy can be vocabulary and kanji because if there is a word that you don't know or you don't know how to read, it could possibly hinder you from answering the question. So make sure that you have a good foundation. And lastly, don't neglect any part in the preparation of the exam. You need a minimum score for each section of the JLPT to pass the exam. 
vocabs, kanji, grammar, reading, and listening, they all go hand in hand. That's all for this video. I hope you were able to pick up some things that were useful for you. It's fun to study another language, so don't think of it as a chore. Instead, enjoy the process and it'll help you learn more. But it's even more fun when there are people learning with you, so feel free to share your learning experiences with me, what you're having a hard time with, you know, motivation and such, and comments. Kambate minasan, sarewa ijo desu.